guys welcome back to my channel or if you're new here thanks for stopping by my name's Renee I'm really glad to have you here so today I have a little bit of a different video I'm really excited to share this with you so what I'm going to be showing you guys today is how to make your own distressed denim shorts I think this is really fun and it's something that I just started doing and I'm really excited about it so if you're like me and you can't really ever find the perfect pair of shorts you can try and make them at home and make them just the way you want which is what I'm going to show you. So I'm super excited about it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because I make videos like this every week and I would love for you to stick around. So let's get started okay, with so the first video. things first are you're gonna need your supplies for your denim shorts. So the first thing obviously that you're gonna need are your shorts or pants. So I just have this pair right here. I will link them down below if you wanna get these exact same ones. So my very first tip about the type of pants or shorts that you get and I would say to get pants, um, jeans, is to get men's jeans. That has worked the best for me. Generally, men's jeans are a little bit looser fitting and because men are usually taller, they will sit higher on your waist. So if you like high-waisted shorts, then men's jeans will be perfect for that. And I also recommend getting a relaxed fit of jeans because the relaxed fit will be just a little bit looser, like I said, which is what you're going for in this case. The other important thing is try to find a pair that are as close as possible to 100% cotton because those ones seem to just distress the best and they turn out the best as well. So definitely, um, in the places that you can find jeans like this, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, as I said, I will link the pair I got from Walmart. I think those were like $12. So really affordable because obviously you probably don't want to spend a lot of money on jeans just to destroy them. You can also thrift these. That's a really easy way to find them. You know, you can go to Goodwill or somewhere like that and find them for really cheap. So that is obviously your first thing that you're gonna need. Next you're gonna need is a pair of scissors to be cutting your jeans. So these are actually fabric scissors, which I really recommend because they're super sharp and these work better than just regular scissors. Um, I did get these on Amazon as well. So if you can see, they are super sharp. I will link these as well. So. The next thing you're gonna want is something like this, an X-Acto knife. This will be used to make the cuts in your shorts and this is definitely necessary. I've had this one for a long time, but I will link one um, from Amazon down in the description box. The next thing you're gonna want is something to measure your shorts with and I just have this tape measurer right here. It's just a really old one that I've had forever. I definitely recommend a ruler over a tape measure. I just can't seem to find my ruler anywhere. So a tape measure will work just as well, but a ruler is gonna be a little bit better because it's nice and straight. And the next thing you're gonna want is something to make marks on your jeans with. I do recommend getting some sort of chalk. This is a uh, Taylor's chalk, which is actually made for clothing. So this works really well. It's, I will link these. I got these on Amazon as well. They're really helpful. I think this came in like a five pack or something like that. And the very last item you're going to need is something hard to distress your jeans on. You don't want to probably do it on anything soft or like fabric or anything like that. So I just have a magazine here. That's what I use um, to put under my jeans when I'm cutting them. Anything hard will work if you have like an old book you don't care about. In my case, I'm just going to use this old magazine. So, so to recap, an old book or magazine, some chalk, tape measure or ruler, X-Acto knife, a pair of fabric scissors, and your pants. So now that you have everything you need, let's get started. So I just realized that I never showed you guys the actual finished result of what we're going to be creating. So as I did already show you, you're just going to have your regular pair of pants like this. And what we are going to be going for is a pair of shorts like this. So there's that pair. And then I do have a darker pair as well that I did. And they look like this. I did a little more distressing on these ones. Okay, guys. Let's so the get very started. first thing you're going to want to do is measure out your inseam and make your marks of where you're going to be cutting your shorts. So I have found generally that between like a two and a half to a three inch inseam is what looks nice on me. So that is what I'm going to be measuring is two and a half to three inches from the inseam. So I'm just gonna take my measuring tape and go ahead and do that right here from the seam. And I am going to, I think, do two and a half. So that's right here. So you're gonna wanna make your mark with your chalk right at that spot. And you wanna make sure to cross both, um, both sides of the seam. So a little bit this way and then a little bit this way so that you can kind of use it as a guide for the other side. So I'm gonna do that as well for this other side. Again, I make the mark 
on both sides of the seam so that it's on the front and the back. And then on this side of the seam, you're going to want to measure so that you can cut this side. So generally, I usually do about 11 inches. So I am going to put my tape measure at the top right here and then find where it's 11 inches and mark that as well. And again, both sides of the seam so I can use it as a guide. And the same thing on this other side. So 11 inches. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is the back side the exact same way. So I will show you how to do that. Same exact thing we did with the front. We're going to do two and a half to three inches on the inseam. So I'm going to measure again. And again, 11 inches on both sides of the end. So those are my marks. And now what I'm gonna do is flip these over and I'm going to make sure everything kind of lines up and start making my lines of where I want these things to connect. So what I have found is I'm going to connect this line to the end of this and that's gonna be my cut. So I measure it in a way so that this side is a little bit higher than the inseam. The inseam's a little bit lower down and then this goes at kind of an angle if you can see. This goes at an angle. So I just think that's a lot more flattering when it's higher up on the sides than at the bottom. So maybe you'll get a better idea once I actually cut it. But what you're going to do is obviously take your ruler, take it from these marks right here that you have and connect it to the marks you made over here. So just go ahead and draw a line. As you can see, I connected my lines. I'll show you guys this a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see there how I connected those. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the back side now. So I want to find my lines, which is right here. I'm going to extend that out since it's a little bit hard to see. And then here's my line right here. And I'm going to go ahead and connect those. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly aren't. I got my lines on the back side now. So now what we're gonna be doing is cutting. And for cutting, you want to cut each leg obviously separately, and you want to cut the front and the back separately as well. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna start with my inseam here and just cut. I'm cutting right to the line. And then I'm going to do the other side as well in the front. Okay, like that. And then I'm gonna cut straight across. And one thing you wanna remember, which I didn't do, so is to pull up the pocket, pull it up and out as much as you can while you're cutting, just so that you don't cut a hole in your pocket because you might wanna use it later on. So make sure you have that away from where you're cutting. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my line. See how nice these scissors cut? They're really sharp. As I said, they're fabric scissors, so they're made to do this, which is good. So there you go. You can see this right here, just the front cut out, and it looks really nice so far. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, so you see I have both front parts cut out and now I'm going to work on the back. So now I'm gonna flip these over and do the same thing. I'm going to make sure I look at the seams on each side and use that as a guide so that I know I'm not like getting too crooked when I'm cutting, uh, just so that they measure up. And so here I go, cutting right on the line. And like I said, be really careful once you get to the inseam because that's where you're most likely to mess up. So there's that side, and now I'm going to do this side. So I have my shorts cut. This is what they look like right now. And they look pretty good. So everything looks pretty even as far as I can see, and what I'm gonna do now is my distressing. So you have the main part of your shorts cut. At this point, 
You can put them on if you want and make sure you like how short they are. And if they're not short enough, then you can obviously go ahead and make them shorter. And I'm going to try these on and make sure I like them and then we'll move on to the distressing. So as I was saying, you're going to want your book or your magazine, something hard. Again, you're going to want to pull your pockets up. So go ahead and put your magazine or whatever you're using under your jeans through the leg. So for my distressing, I'm going to start making my marks with my chalk of where I want to do it. I think I want to do kind of a bigger one down here towards the leg, but not super close to the edge. So what I'm going to do is just draw a box of where I want the distressing. So I'm just drawing a square. So I want the distressing to be in between these two lines in this box. So I'm going to do one kind of big cut here, but a thin one. And then up here, I think I'm going to do a bigger one. not quite as long but a little bit higher like that and then I think I'm going to do a smaller one here on the side kind of in between the two. So I'm making my boxes. I just drew the boxes and I'm kind of going to do the same thing for the other side. Again just draw your boxes. Okay so here's the part that's a little bit I guess tedious. You're going to get your X-Acto knife and what you want to make sure to do is not cut your lines too close together. So you're going to press down and make your line. You want, I would say, between an eighth to a quarter of an inch in between your lines. And depending how many lines and cuts you do is obviously how big your square is going to be. So for this first one, I'm probably only going to do two or three and then the bigger ones I usually do like four to five. So you're going to want to hold your shorts as tight as you can when you do this because you don't want to mess up your line. So I'm going to go ahead and press down and make my cuts. And depending how sharp your tool is, it might go through on the first try, it might not. So mine went through pretty good. So that is what we got going on here. So as you can see, the rips. There's about three of them there, so that's what I'm going to do for the smaller one. I did three here, four here, and then, yeah, five on the big one. So that's how that looks. You can see it up close here. And obviously this is not what it's going to look like. It's going to fray once you wash these. So I'm going to go okay, ahead and so do the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to do the back. I did finish the front. Uh, I did the other side pretty similar as I said, and that's what this side ended up looking like. So I'm going to do the back. I usually don't do a whole lot on the back. Be careful around the pockets. You know, be careful around the seams. Make sure you don't cut too far into them because then you could end up like splitting your pocket. These ones do already have a tiny bit of distressing in certain places. So... I don't want to do a ton. I think I'm just going to do a little bit by the pockets, maybe some here, and then maybe a little bit at the bottom. So if you do decide to do some cuts on the pocket, make sure you get your whatever you're using in there so that you don't cut through too many layers. And do your cuts. And I'm going to do, I think, a little one right here. So I think that looks pretty good. So this is what I ended up doing with the back. I got that little one right there, and then I did one kind of at the bottom, and then a little one here on the pocket, and then a small one up here by the waistband. So. That's how these look. So now all I'm going to do is throw these in the wash. I am going to dry the, I'm going to wash these and I'm going to dry them. That is the key. Once you wash them, it starts to break up the fraying. And then once you dry them, that just makes it fray even more. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the wash and dry them. And then I will show you what they look like when they're done. Okay guys. So I just pulled my shorts out of the dryer and this is what they look like. I am really happy with how they turned out. And they are super frayed at the bottom, which is what I wanted. And here's what the back looks like. And I think these turned out really, really cute. So let me show you what they look like on. Okay, guys. So this is what the shorts look like on. 
I absolutely love them. They turned out super distressed, which is kind of what I wanted on these. I really like how frayed they are, and the more you wash these, the more frayed they will get. So these just end up getting better and better with each wash. So this is how they look on the front, and this is what they look like in the back. I really, really like how these turned out. So I definitely recommend trying these out if you're interested in making your own frayed jeans because it's really fun and obviously you can customize them however you want. So I'm really happy with how these turned out. Okay guys, that's it for my video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked seeing something a little bit different. Let me know down below if you like this video, if you are gonna try something like this or if you've already done it. I'd love to hear it. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye guys.